Combat is dangerous. But less known are the perils a veteran faces in his or her transition back to civilian life. Struggles with drugs, alcohol, and sexual violence, with PTSD, anxiety, and depression, can be challenges even greater than serving your country. The Department of Veterans Affairs has instituted an aggressive plan to end homelessness among veterans. We have chosen four veterans who have benefited from this plan, who after homelessness reached a turning point in their lives, who found a road back to society and a new sense of hope. Making sure patients make it to their appointments is part of Tito Velez's job. Doling out love is not, but Tito does it anyway. He talked with the patients. He transmits peace and understanding to those lonely patients. Tito knows firsthand what it's like to be without a friend or a place to call home. I, I, I was a, a, a functional drug addict for 25 years and about five completely gone, out of control. Tito began to use drugs and alcohol while serving in the Army. When I went in, we started using drugs to forget a little bit about what we were going through. Tito stayed on drugs after being discharged. When his wife left him, he became homeless in New York. It was winter, I was out in the cold, hungry. I had to call my mother to send me a, a plane ticket back to Puerto Rico. His mother opened her heart and her home to him, but it made no difference. Tito took to the streets in San Juan. I hated drugs, but it was too late, I was hooked. For many in recovery, there's a turning point. For Tito, it was deciding whether he wanted to live or die. My life was miserable. I didn't want to live no more. I didn't care. I wanted to die. Tito chose life. He decided to seek help at the VA Medical Center in San Juan. We enrolled him in the program of the homeless program and then he was referred to the Hacienda de Veteranos. Tito, ¿cómo está? Muy bien, mi hermano. Me alegro verte. The Hacienda de Veteranos, a veteran homestead incorporated program, is partly funded by the VA Homeless Providers Grant and Per Diem program. We give them the transition home is only for veterans. They got to be homeless, um, substance abuse, uh, alcoholism. At La Hacienda, Tito liked the structure, the freedom, and the strong guidance. The Hacienda doesn't help you find a job, doesn't help you find school. Uh, you do that you, yourself, but they provide the tool. While at La Hacienda, Tito continued to receive medical and mental health care at the VA Medical Center in San Juan. We really enjoyed uh, his recovery process. We're very proud of him because you can see the effort that he had done. After working as a volunteer, Tito entered the VA's compensated work therapy program that helps veterans develop the skills to find permanent jobs. When a position opened up at the hospital, he was hired. Never miss a day since I've been working, never been late. I'm a happy guy. I have more than I ever dreamed I could have. Violet Galloway is beginning a whole new life, even though she and her daughter, Jacqueline, live in a shelter with no other place to call home. Mother and daughter ended up here after Violet was sexually assaulted by a male friend while they were homeless. I started having um, flashbacks and, you know, remembering different things that happened before. What Violet remembered was a previous sexual assault during her military service. The real uh, traumatic thing was 
when I was actually um, raped, I just suppressed it and didn't say anything for a long time. For years, Violet knew something was wrong. I didn't trust people. If I don't get too close, then no one can hurt me again. Violet decided to seek help. She found it at the VA Medical Center in West Palm Beach. In therapy, she learned she was suffering from PTSD and military sexual trauma. It was a turning point. I realized just how affected I was. It's fulfilling. Finally, someone believed me that this really did happen, that I wasn't at fault. At the VA Medical Center, where she was entitled to free health care, Violet and the VA staff developed her recovery plan. We work with veterans to accomplish vocational goals from employment, retraining, um, sometimes it's just social skills or life skills or adjusting to returning to work. Participating in the VA Compensated Work Therapy Program gave Violet the experience and the confidence to find a permanent job. We kind of gave her an introduction and boom, she took off running from that point. Nice amenity to have yeah. in South Florida. It really is. Violet and Jacqueline will soon be in their own home. Thanks to the VA's Housing and Urban Development Veterans Affairs Supported Housing, or HUDVASH program, which helps homeless veterans find permanent supported housing. Violet qualifies for the HUDVASH program because she was in a, in a domestic violence situation where we intervened and assisted her with placement at a domestic violence shelter. I met Violet in the Women's Outpatient Social Work Office. She was very tentative, I think, and scared and feeling kind of hopeless when we first met. Now, I think she feels very hopeful and very strong and very proud. I would like to study psychology. There's been so many things that have happened in my life that I feel like they're for a reason, and that is to help other people. Violet says she owes a lot to the VA's homeless assistance programs. They have helped me and are, are still helping me realize that I am okay and this problem did exist. And there are programs in place to help us overcome those challenges and repair those wounds. Chris Brown is a physical therapist who helps other veterans recover from trauma, something he knows all about. For years, Chris used alcohol to dull the symptoms of his severe PTSD. He ended up on the streets of Boston. His past is now allowing him to help others with their future. If somebody has been through a trauma or been through a situation that's similar to the person sitting across from them, it makes them a much better therapist. Nothing in Chris's childhood would have led anyone to believe that he would end up homeless. Chris was just a normal American kid, played soccer, played baseball, played football, uh, was in drama in high school. While serving in the Gulf War as a firefighter, Chris experienced severe trauma. We had a large amount of landmines, cluster bombs, and part of my response was to assess and treat injuries and fortunately with landmines there's usually not a whole lot to assess and treat. Only on leaving the service and working as a civilian firefighter did Chris's PTSD symptoms come on full-blown. It was the drinking, it was the, it was the anger, it was the depression. Chris lost jobs and his brief marriage ended when alcohol took over his life. We had to say Chris, you know, this isn't working anymore. You have to go get some help someplace. Well, he, he really didn't go get help. He became homeless. And I know that he lived under the overpasses in Boston. And if you know what they... Chris's PTSD is now under control. But his flashbacks and other symptoms may never completely go away. I'm very hypervigilant. I am always looking over my shoulder. I always know where the exit is. In his darkest hour, Chris one day realized he wanted his life back. You know, someone mentioned there was this farm program in New Hampshire. It's in the middle of nowhere, dude. It's perfect for you. 
Victory Farm is part of Veteran Homestead Incorporated and operates with partial funding from the VA Homeless Providers Grant and Per Diem Program. The mission of the farm is to help uh, veterans who are homeless and have substance abuse and mental health issues. When he first arrived at the farm, Chris noticed nothing around him. Then there was a turning point. So we were out in the field working and Chris was kind of standing around, you know, whole home and I thought, how are we ever going to motivate this guy? And one of the counselors turned around and said to him, you know, Chris, I don't know what branch of service you were in, but I wouldn't want you watching my back. After that, Chris began to recover. They reminded me that I'm not alone in the world, that other people need me. Farm saved him. Farm saved his life, definitely. If I didn't find a solution, I'm sure I would have drank myself to death by now. He's light years from where he was when I met him. And he's somebody who I would now trust with just about anything. We're just so proud of Chris, how far he's come. Yeah. And he's still going on. I'm in remission, provided I do what I need to do. But if I don't do what I'm supposed to do, I could end up back on the streets at any time. The good thing is, because I have all these great things, I don't want to go back there, ever. During his military service in Iraq, it was Dwan Thigpen's job to provide military officers with security during missions. I saw plenty of combat. Um, IED attacks, small arm fire, uh, indirect fire. I lost dear friends during uh, some of those outings. It still hurts like it was yesterday. When he first came, he was having nightmares, he was having flashbacks, um, he was having a lot of recall. Duan's transition to civilian life was rocky. While working as a guard in Washington, D.C., he ran into trouble. I had to engage a person with a firearm. Um, to make a long story short, I was incarcerated. Fortunately for Duan, the VA Maryland Healthcare System and the Veteran Justice Outreach Program joined forces to help. I was um, released to go see a um, psychiatrist and I was uh, deemed as a person with um, PTSD. And through the Veterans Justice Outreach Program, we were able to provide the necessary services, support to Dewan, as well as um, information to the court. Without this intervention, he could have been incarcerated for a very, very, very long time. Dwan was sent to the Perry Point VA Medical Center, a program that provides residential rehabilitation to homeless veterans, where he received treatment for his PTSD. He was then transferred to McVet, a VA grant and per diem program. He says it was a turning point. Uh, McVet has been my salvation in conjunction with my uh, my higher power. We have uniquely married uh, the services that we provide here at MacVet with the Department of Veterans Affairs, uh, Department of Housing and Urban Development, and Department of Labor to provide the services that our veterans need, male and female, to get themselves back on their feet. Duan began his stay at McVet in their transitional housing program. He now lives in McVet's single occupancy residency, where veterans have a private room. Duan continues to receive medical care at the VA Medical Center in Baltimore, while benefiting from case management and therapy at McVet. It's very helpful to have uh, other veterans to um, congregate with and work issues out amongst each other. The program helps us as uh, far as life skills, um, honing in on skills that you already had. His counselors say Duan has come a long way. But it's night and day. It's tremendous, the progress that he's made. I would like to begin school, college, as a business major in June. It's like this place was God sent, not only for myself, but I'm pretty sure for many other veterans. For veterans, the journey back from homelessness is a hard one. It can be especially difficult for veterans with mental health problems 
substance abuse, or other disabilities that create barriers to valuable relationships with their friends, family, and others who provide them with support. The VA Homeless Programs offer a pathway back to a productive life within their communities.